Hello again, Gary Moore with a word from the word. Continuing on in Luke chapter 2, looking at the Christmas story, I want to look a little further out and talk about Simeon today. We'll start off in verse chapter 2 of Luke, verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it's beautiful to see. Now, we, we know that the Holy Spirit was received by um, all of those, all the believers of Christ at the day of Pentecost. But we see that the Holy Spirit is moving in Simeon's life. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came by the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law. Now, I want to stop there just for a quick second. I think all of us should have in, in in our walk as believers, the Holy Spirit should be communicating with us, letting us know we need to be in the house of the Lord. We need that community of believers around us. So we see that the Holy Spirit has brought him in. We don't know how many times a week Simeon went into the temple, but this particular day, the Holy Spirit has said, this is a day. This is the day you need to be at the temple. <clears throat> then took he him up in his arms. So he took the baby Jesus into his arms. Jesus would have been 40 days old at this point, awaiting the purification of his mother so they could bring him in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. The salvation of the people, Jesus Christ, the one that would save his people from their sins, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Now, just as Abraham was told that his children, that he would be, that him and his children would be blessed and all the people of the world would be blessed. They were to be the example for all of us. Now, they didn't live up for that example, but Jesus Christ came to be that final example that we may come to know the Lord as our Lord and Savior, but that we could walk as he walks. Let's continue on. A light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. Now he was to be the ultimate example of an Israelite. All God, but also all man. But would be that deciding factor for us Gentiles, like myself. Thank the good Lord that he came and was born of a virgin. As we continue reading, we see something else there. And Joseph and his wife marveled at those things which were spoken of him. And Simeon blessed them and said unto Mary his mother, Behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. So we see set for the fall and and the rising again. What did Christ come to do? He come to die upon that cross. He died for the remission of sins. Mine as well as yours. And for a sign which shall be spoken against. So we know that they'll always go through. And will constantly say that what Christ did. Wasn't a deciding factor. But it was. It was the final deciding factor. Verse 35, he looks at Mary and says, 
Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also. Said unto Mary, uh, said, uh, bless them and said unto Mary, Behold, this child is set for the fall and the rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. Now that one right there, as a mother, you go through, you love your child as unconditionally as humanly possible. And the last thing you want to see is, is your child done in the same fashion that we've seen that Christ was done. The heartbreak and the pain. She knew the truth from the beginning. We don't know to what extent Christ had explained everything to her and his family. We also know how his half-brothers felt. But as far as Mary was concerned, from the time that the angel had spoken, things had been so, as God had said. But we see Simeon identify that a sword shall pierce through thy own soul. That's a beautiful picture right there. His last act of love towards Mary took place at the cross. The rise and the fall, and the fall, fall and the rise, as, it, as the verse says. He's already born. So we have his birth. But in order to complete everything... To get victory over sin, he had to fall. Death, hell, and the grave thought they had a great victory when he died on that cross. But three days later, oh, amen. Three days later, Christ came out. So, this season, when you, when you see Simeon and you see these verses that they don't even really talk about, in the story of his birth. In fact, you've got to go into, I believe, Matthew to see them reference the Magi, which came in probably around two years later. But Simeon and Anna came in on the scene at day 40, or day 41 probably. Uh, she had to wait 40 days for, uh, the day of uh, 40 days of purification that way she could go in and dedicate dedicate the child to the Lord and then uh, make the appropriate sacrifices and the beautiful thing is is we have the Holy Spirit speaking to a man that loves the Lord and is communicating with the Lord we'd had so many years where God seemingly wasn't communicating with his people but we know here that Simeon, through the Holy Spirit, has been, God has been still speaking and letting his, his people know the things they need to know. And it's beautiful. We, we see a child born and we see its glory. We don't always, we won't know what a child will be, but God does. God sees our beginning from our end. The beautiful thing is, God let Simeon know, you stay loving me the way you love me. You continue to serve me. I'm going to let you see the last sacrifice that will ever need to be made. And the beautiful thing is, it wasn't just for the Jews. It was for us Gentiles. Just as it is said right there in verse 32, a light to lighten the Gentiles, we needed to see the sunshine. Glory, glory, glory. Today may have been a gloomy day, but when you see the glory of the sun, when you picture it this time of the year, we see the manger. But Simeon identifies the next step, and that is the cross. So what came from heaven in a manger traveled to a cross to descend only to ascend victorious for us all. Blessed is our Lord. 
So in this season, you see him in the manger. Just know that the wood that started it was still wood that would finish it upon a cross. So from from the heaven to the manger, from the manger to the cross, it'll pierce the heart of a mother to see the loss of a child. But with the death of Jesus, three days later, we got a great victory. The rising again. Open your eyes to the season. Open your eyes and your heart to the Lord. Humble and repent. Let Jesus be Lord in your life. God bless.